Welcome to the FNA Show. This is Eamon, and I congratulate you on finding FNA 19, the terrorist. Newsflash, I've had to switch podcast servers. It is a bitch, but it was necessary. Therefore, for all our iTunes users out there, you're going to have to resubscribe to the new feed. I apologize 214 times for the inconvenience this will cause you. Through your painstaking efforts to resubscribe, though, you will be in the know. And you will be up to date on all new FNA shows. So, with that boring bit of information aside, we're going to move on to something we haven't officially done in a while. Got a little help for it. Welcome to the douchiest people of the week segment. I would like to tell the FNA show something about douches. Douches are people who put shit in ashtrays. They are real assholes and should be banned from the cup's patio. What do you think of that, douchebag? Oh, dude, I have a car for it. That's a nice show. I'm just calling, but do not be a dude. Hello? 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 Yo, I would like to nominate someone on eBay. I'm looking for a hollow body guitar, and someone has advertised a brand new vintage hollow body guitar. A brand new vintage hollow body guitar. This year's vintage. Um, I don't have his screen name, but I suggest we call him Douchebag in honor of your fine competition, and that is my nomination. Godspeed. Seven percent of Americans did not read even a single book last year, according to a recent survey released by the Associated Press. Very interesting. Well, the number one quote problem with and the number one benefit to books is that they require effort to get through, something that I don't believe all of us are quite familiar with. And that effort is heightened by the fact that we have been conditioned to the easier, softer, more luxurious, middle-of-the-road route to a commonplace, apathetic American outlook on life. Whoa. In a country consumed with monetary debt, because with the invention of plastic, we found the means to satisfy our desires to look, touch, and taste today, rather than waste time with work or effort of any kind to attain those things we apparently can't live properly or normally without, supersized television, supersized houses, supersized SUVs, supersized value meals, food today, it's no surprise to me that books... Those pages of outstandingness bound together by a cover that everyone is still comfortable with judging have fallen to the wayside. Why waste hours plowing through one story in print while trying not to fall asleep when you could spend those hours keeping up with multiple television shows that will require no more of you than taking up your favorite seat in front of the screen? A more apt title for the Lazy Boy Company would be Lazy Fucks. But I guess the truth would probably chase away all those dollars of interest they need to suck out of the 36th month payment you make on a fucking chair. And thus, not a whole lot of real readers left out there. WTF, as interwebbers and text message users would say, I personally think it's pretty fucked up when an article in the newspaper has to remind us what the term median means in their survey, yet ask any teenager what WTF means and if they've been cursed with the gift of a cell phone as soon as they learn to speak like most Americans, they'll probably tell with confidence that it's merely a carefree coding for what the fuck. And if your tolerance allows it, that average teenager could probably spout off many more time-saving abbreviations for other such commonly used phrases. Wouldn't want to spend an extra 4.5 seconds or so typing whole words now, would The internet 
isn't to blame. Nor our cell phones, I think. The problem, as with uh, all, I would say, of our problems, is rooted in complacency, laziness, misplaced priorities, or a lack thereof, and expectations. The interwebs and phones both promote and encourage information and communication. Two vital allies of such important assets, at least to me, as common sense, relationships, creativity, evolution, etc., etc., Problems ensue, though, as a result of living in a nation, if you can call it that, which expects handouts, knowledge, friendship, and success as though they are birthrights owed us upon entrance into the world. Now, I'm all about acquiring those things and utilizing them in the trenches of social American warfare, but at the same time, I realize that I'm going to have to put forth some goddamn effort to leave behind that all-too-familiar sanctuary of stagnant complacency our society has coated itself with. Now, I know what you're thinking. I do. It's okay. You're thinking, for the love of God, Amen. You're just a cock-smoking delusional bastard who thinks his shit doesn't stink and enjoys pelting his fellow Americans with verbal abuse at their own self-induced expense. WTF, dude. WTF. Well, I guess that would be pretty much exactly an accurate description of what's happening. Should I not take my mulligan for the first nine here and now? Allow me, not for the first time, nor for the last... To reiterate the firmly grounded through experiences and failures fact that I am a pretty damn average human who left to my own devices would lounge out in front of the TV screen eating dollar menu food and jerking off while fantasizing about how I really deserve to have a six-figure income, wicked cute chicks lining up to blow me, a college degree hanging on the wall, a self-published book on the New York Times bestseller list, and 16 hours a day of free time to do whatever and whoever I want. Yeah. I'm a self-centered, egocentrical fuck, similar in worth to the slug I accidentally squashed while picking up a piece of firewood Friday night. The key for me has been the recognition and expansion through creative thought of how worthless I am capable of being. Then, I'm able to see a little bit more clearly through the glaze of American middle class the fact that complacency, bonded to laziness, with the super glue of expectation is an illusion of comfort, similar more to a leech. Only, when I can recognize that trinity of blood-sucking deceitfulness am I able to burn it off with a constructively positioned flame of action. The nature of this action I have found, initially at least, is not as important as the fact that I freaking take it. It is from this sea of realization that my life goals of not being a douche and being coachable, among many other things, have come from. Massive amounts of serpentine seaweed hid these objectives from my sight for quite some time, while the waves of comfortable American lies rocked me into a waking sleep of satisfaction before I shipwrecked into the reality I stand on. So, I talk down about these things only out of shitty first-hand experience and only with the concern that complacency has the power to kill us all as it is now currently the process of doing. It is the terrorist we breed with every day, and I have come to on that french fry sofa more than once in my life, and I doubt for the last times in mid-stroke to the subtle and cold understanding that falling in line with the couch potato terrorists is just not going to cut it. I believe also that a crucial ingredient when properly brewing complacency is a skewed priority here and there. Priorities are like salt. It doesn't always take a whole lot of them, especially when misplaced properly, to go a long way. And then, once you start to develop a taste for them, you keep adding more and more in the wrong places as the days go by until you have a heart attack and die. Then, to the dismay of your surviving relatives, your overweight Ronald McDonald ass won't fit in a regular-sized casket. So they've got to dish out extra cash that they know they deserve to make more of to get the supersized casket and bury you. And just like that, your self-centered priorities went off and fucked you and your family in the ass. And you're dead, so that's really good. The point is, 
When I put myself as my number one priority, I accomplish little of lasting value to myself or others. More often than not, I retreat into a haze of lazy observation. Life is symmetry, and I fear that we are grossly off balance as a result of the expectations passed down to us by our culture through much of government, religion, educational institutions, and most of the mass media. The truth is out there. You've just got to wade through a lot of bullshit and douchebags to see it. The solution lies in growth and evolution through trial and error, but always effort, and also the crucifixion of our internal terrorists one by one. To quote a superb movie, get busy living or get busy dying, it's goddamn right. Need to say something? FNA Show can be reached via voicemail at 601-857-1229 or email fnashow at gmail.com. Hello, this is Park from the band Highwind, and you are, are already or about to be listening to Gettysburg. That's about all there is. This is the FNA show. Pent out.
This is Eamon for the FNA Show. Thanks for listening. Special thanks to Highwind for having their music on the show. Check them out at myspace.com slash highwindmusic. Remember, be coachable out there. Turn off your television and read a book. This is Eamon. Pants out. <laughs>